Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models Design of Experiments and we're into part six of a little mini series within that playlist that I'm calling Balanced Incomplete Block Design. And this is the uh, first of two videos on contrast. Here we're going to look at estimability and treatment contrast. Now as a reminder, our model is y equals x beta plus air and then if you go to part two of this mini-series on column space of the design matrix, we partitioned it into X beta, which deals with the block effects, and X tau, which deals with the tau effects. And then we also added a well-chosen zero and then manipulated it more into this uh, model. And they're all 100% identical. Of course, the error term is multivariate normal, mean vector, zero covariance matrix sigma squared i. Now I'm going to also have to pass you off onto a little four-part mini-series within this playlist of general linear model design of experiments where we go into great detail of estimability and what it even means in the context of analysis of variance. And again it's in the playlist general linear models design of experiments and there we let lambda prime beta star we you know is estimable if lambda is part of the row space of the design matrix and that's for some row now this creates unique estimates for this linear combination of the beta parameters and the unique estimate is where we just plug in the least squares estimate for the beta parameters take the same linear combination and that's the unique estimate and then that's what's estimable. So this is proved in this mini-series, oh, in the mini-series, the four-part mini-series on estimability, and will be illustrated in R. Now, the R program that I've already created that we'll go over um, in two videos, it's, it'll be part eight of eight. To me, it's just mind-boggling. I create a few different least squares estimates for the beta parameters, and they're all equally least squares estimates for the beta parameters. But then when we take linear combinations where lambda is part of the row space, we get unique estimates from all the beta least squares estimates of the beta that we create. Anyway, I just find that so fascinating. So a treatment contrast is in, in scalar form, it's yj equal to mu plus beta j equal to tau i plus epsilon i. So this is our model in scalar form. See part one for more details. But a treatment contrast is where we take a linear combination of the tau's, so the, the treatment parameters, such that the, the CI is summed to zero. Now, more in matrix form, we call it gamma is equal to lambda prime beta. Now, technically, it has to be a linear combination of these betas. But in order to get this effect, the linear combination of the tau's, it says this lambda parameter pretty much has to be all zeros except for the last a components, and that's C1 through CA, right? Because this beta vector comprises of mu, beta 1, beta 2, up to beta b, and then it's tau 1, tau 2, all the way to tau a. And so this lambda parameter has to be this to, to make it look like this, to be a treatment contrast. And again, this lambda parameter has to sum to zero. Uh, note that lambda beta star is equal to L prime tau, where, where L prime is just C1 through CA. And this is, a, this is a shortcut notation for this longer notation. And this really illustrates that it is a treatment contest. We're just to contrast. So we're just taking linear combinations of the tau's. So the first theorem of two that we'll prove is that, that this treatment contrast is estimable if and only if it's part of the row space of this matrix. And, and as a reminder, this piece right here comes into play here. So it's this matrix, which is part of the tau column space. So it's estimable. And and let's prove it. So let's go this way. So we're going to assume it's estimable. So lambda prime tau is equal to 
I mean L prime tau is equal to lambda prime beta and we're assuming it's estimable right we're going this way so there exists a rho such that rho prime beta is equal to rho prime x beta right so this lambda is part of the rho space is what this is saying so to write that out more specifically the beta is this comprises of the beta parameters and mu is in this the tau's this is this is the column space x which is partitioned to x beta and x tau and this is rho but let's specifically just look at the lambda so it's part of the rho space by assumption now we multiply that in oh my cat wants out every time I start a video so but this lambda remember has to comprise of a lot of zeros and then L right because it we want to we, we don't really want the mu and the beta parameters only the tau parameters okay. so lambda prime is rho prime tau now if we add zero to this it doesn't change it so so this is this piece and right here we said this was zero or has to be zero right so we're so we're subtracting zero but now we can right factor out x tau and left factor out rho and we get this so we're done so l prime is equal to this if it's if this is estimable now let's go back the other way let's assume this is true so lambda prime beta is equal to l prime tau and we are assuming that L is equal to this quantity here. It's the row space of this matrix. Now what we're going to do is add zero to this, right? So this piece here is here. Now this piece, remember I minus M beta. M beta is the perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of X. So, so this matrix, I minus M beta, is a perpendicular projection matrix on the orthogonal complement of the column space of beta, beta, uh, x beta. So this times this matrix is zero. So this whole thing is zero. So we're adding zero. But if we left factor out a row i minus m beta, which is this piece here, then we're left with this. Now this is just matrix multiplication to get this piece here. But this is this is lambda prime beta. So this beta vector this beta vector is this and this is the design matrix X right so lambda prime is part of the row space of X and lambda must equal this so this implies that that this implies that lambda prime tau is estimable and that's what we wanted to show now the second theorem is that lambda <laughs> lambda I keep calling it lambda L prime tau is estimable if and only if it's a treatment contrast and so the the there's no use messing around or trying to find other estimable combinations of the taus it has to be a treatment contrast so let's prove that first let's go back let's go left which says let's assume it's a treatment contrast then let let L prime be a treatment contrast. Now um, must find a row such that this is true, right? According to theorem one, L prime, since it's a treatment contrast, must equal this. Okay. Now from part five of this mini series, property one, if we let rho equal this quantity. So we, we put this right there, and this satisfies the requirement. And all the details are in, are in part five of this mini-series, and it's property number one. So we'll, I'll push us off to that video for the details. So let's go the other way. Let's, let's assume that it's estimable. So this uh, L prime tau, which is this sum, is estimable. So that means there exists a row such that 
L is in the row space of this matrix, right? By theorem one, that has to be true. Now, let's look at this piece over here, which is this. Now, let's multiply those two into here and get this, and then multiply those in to get this. So let's look at uh, this piece first. But before we do, I want to point out that we're going to change the notation. So the single index notation, one, two, three, four, five, six, we're going to switch it to the double index notation. And this is uh, in, in great detail in part five. So these double indices really deal with the treatment and the block that, that the observation is, is in. And I'm going to have to push you off to part five for more detail of that. So going back to star, we have the row vector. And then this is the tau matrix, right? But in, in columns. And in part five, we showed that these columns are really just zeros and ones, right? So we can create an indicator function that tells us when a one is going to occur and when a zeros are going to occur. And the notation that we used was this, xij comma one, right? That's the first column, tau, means we're in the tau matrix, all the way to xij a, which we're in the eighth column, tau. These can be thought of as indicator functions, delta i one. Now, when we multiply this row vector times this column, we get a sum, right? And then when we multiply that, and we do that for each column. So the eighth column will be this, okay? And so now we're going to stop a second and look at this double star, this piece of the uh, of this matrix here, or this uh, quantity. So um, it's a it's a row vector. We're going to not put the star in here. So what we do is we expand x tau. So it's a matrix and it has a columns. So we take this piece times each column and that's what this represents. Right? Column 1. This is column A of x tau. But in part 5 we notice that this piece here can be thought of as, as also as an indicator function. So when xj is in this set of block indices for treatment 1, it's a 1. Otherwise it's a 0. Um, the row we just kept out, and, and then f for each column, it's the same. So this is an indicator function. It's a 1 or a 0, depending upon if J is in the block indices for treatment A. Now, when we take this row vector times this column, we get this. So we're summing over the IJs, the double indexes of row, and that's what we get here. And then we do that for each column, and this is the eighth column. So we're taking this row vector times this column, and this is what we get. Now let's put all the pieces together. So this right here is this piece minus this piece, which is what this is. So we, we add them component-wise. So this component plus this component. Now notice that we're putting in the minus here, right? So this minus, and it's this piece, and we're adding it to this piece. So there's a row ij common, so it's factored out. So this is what we get. And when, then we do that for each component. So this is the eighth component. Now, by assumption, we're assuming it's estimable. So this actually has to equal lambda. So it has to equal the c1, c2, to ca right, of the linear combination of the tau's. So now let's add up these components and they must, um, yeah, so, so that's it. So by assumption it's estimable. But let's add up these components to see what we get. So let's go lambda prime 1, which says we're adding these components, right, just times 1, because it's a row vector, it's a column vector, so this is equivalent to adding. So now, so to add this, add this, we're actually, so this plus this, you know, A times, we can, we can, it's all summed over IJ, so we can kind of factor that out right here, and the rows common, 
so what's left over is, is delta I1, delta I2, all the way to delta IA. So that's this piece. And now we're subtracting all of those pieces, right? But here, this was X tau. It's the, it's the part of the design matrix associated with the treatment effect. So and if you add all the columns of X tau, you get the one vector. And here, we're adding these components. Um, and So we're going to get the one vector, but K times it. Because these are the uh, block indices for each treatment. And each treatment occurs K times. So we're going to end up K times the one vector. Well, those Ks cancel. And we have 1 minus 1, which is 0. So it's a treatment contrast. So, not, so by assumption, we assumed it's estimable. But it also sums to zero, so it's a treatment contrast, and that's what we wanted to prove. Okay, so note that all of this will be illustrated in R. And actually, this ends up being, I think, one of the more cool R programs, how I illustrate all of the, these concepts. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like it, subscribe, so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.